meter is 1 billionth or 10 power minus 9 of a meter. Nanomaterials are found in nature also. Examples of natural nanomaterials are spider web and enamel of teeth. Scientists found out that by the process of nanification, atoms can be arranged in new order and form new molecules showing unbelievable properties when compared with the mother substance. In 1996, Harry Croto, Rick Smelly and Robert Curl got the Nobel Prize for preparing such new molecules of carbon-carbon-60. This new molecule was nicknamed as Buckyball. This is the strongest material ever made. When this technology becomes common, our computers can be dwarfed to thumb size and its capacity improves titanically. Nanotechnology in Medical Science An emerging integrative approach to treating infectious diseases is using nanoparticle forms of medicines. Advantages of nanomedicine delivery methods include better disease targeting, especially for intracellular pathogens, ability to cross membranes and enter cells, longer duration of drug action, reduced side effects and cost savings from lower doses. Applications of nanotech in medicine As we know, there is no medicine for killing viruses. But after the emergence of nanotechnology, we can find out and kill each virus with the aid of medicine or mechanics. Chemotherapy medicines can be applied to specific points without destroying healthy cells. We can carry out surgeries without perceptible wounds or blood shedding. Skin creams and dresses made up of nanoparticles not only protect us but also monitor our body systems and automatically inject required medicines to our body. Insulin pills coated with tiny nanoparticles keep blood sugar levels stable for 10 hours. Nanopill is a much more physiological way of delivering the insulin as it protects insulin as it enters the stomach. Homeopathy. Homeopathy is not a theory of disease but a theory of cure. It was discovered by Dr. Samuel Hanneman. Homeos means similar and pathos means suffering. Homeopathy means to cure a patient with drugs which produce similar symptoms to the sufferings of the patient. The law of homeopathy is similia similibus curenter which means let likes be cured by likes. Potentization is a process by which the inherent latent curative powers of a drug can be aroused. Homeopathic medicines are prepared by the process of potentization. Potentization is of two types, trituration and saccation. The scales for potentization are decimal, centesimal and 50 millesimal. By potentization, the quantity decreases but the quality of the medicine is increased. According to Anschkel's law, small doses stimulate, medium doses paralyze, and large doses kill. Master Hahnemann recommended application of minimum dose in all cases. This is mainly done to avoid unwanted aggravations. Some highly respected basic scientific research has begun to verify the claims that homeopaths have made for 200 years and that various extremely low concentrations of biological agents can exhibit powerful biochemical effects. Beta endorphins are known to modulate natural killer cell activity in dilutions of 10 power minus 18. Interleukin-1, an important agent in our immune system, has been found to increase T-cell clone proliferation at 10 power minus 19. Pheromones, which are externally emitted hormones that various animals and insects are known to create, will result in hypersensitive reactions when as little as a single molecule is received. Homeopathy and Nanotechnology the basic issue debated by the established medical community is that homeopathic solutions contain such extremely dilute quantities of the active ingredients that there is almost no probability that enough molecules remain after dilution to have any effect at all. Herein lies the concept of nanotechnology. Homeopathy can be thought as medicine at ultra small doses or nanopharmacology which avoids the often debilitating side effects of conventional pharmacology. When homeopathic medicines are diluted and potentized, the kinetic energy in succussion or the mechanical energy in trituration is converted and stored as potential energy. By the process of nanification, 
homeopathic medicines become soft as a dewdrop and at the same time strong as a tsunami wave. In homeopathy, one nano unit is equal to 10 power minus 9 potency, that is 9x potency. Nano unit is the basic measurement in nanotechnology, hence the basic unit is 9x. Homeopathic medicine as nanomedicine. Many homeopathic medicines show side affinities and organ specificity. Nanoparticles of these medicines possess some type of auto-navigating system to find and reach the target diseased organ. If nanotechnology is applied on this basis, we can convert the nanoparticles of homeopathic medicines into nanoballs which can be inserted with medicines to reach the site easily and safely. Homeopathy as a form of nanomedicine has a promising history of treating epidemic infectious diseases including malaria, leptospirosis in addition to acute upper respiratory tract infections. That is why there is growing interest on homeopathy as a method of treatment for infectious diseases. Plus, it is a safe, gentle and inexpensive solution for patient care. Theories to explain homeopathy The nanobubble theory Researchers from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, have discovered that it is nanotechnology which is at the very basis of homeopathic treatment. IIT Bombay has published its findings in the peer-reviewed medical journal Homeopathy, published by the reputed firm Elsevier. Prashant Shikramane, under the supervision of Dr. Jayesh Pellare from the Chemical Engineering Department of IIT Bombay, presented a doctoral thesis under the title, Extreme Homeopathic Dilutions Retain Starting Materials, a Nanoparticulate Perspective. Once a remedy is diluted beyond 24x or 12c potencies, it is diluted beyond Avogadro's number, which theoretically indicates that no molecules of the original substance are present. They obtained a bunch of homeopathic remedies from various Indian manufacturers and analyzed the presence of physical entities in nanoparticle form and they found naturally occurring metal molecules of gold, copper and iron. The research team confirmed that tiny amounts of the original metal were still spotted even at extreme dilutions of 200 C. Their hypothesis is that the original metals formed nanobubbles and floated on the surface of the highly diluted mixtures. This is how they retained their original potency. The original molecules are present in nanogram quantities in their most potent state, contrary to the arithmetic. From these simple observations, it is not at all right to declare that they have shown how homeopathy works and homeopathy is nanotechnology. Only because they could detect some traces of elements, that does not necessarily mean that the active principles of homeopathic drugs are nothing but those traces of elemental particles. The Electromagnetic Wave Theory any substance can affect the human organism in two ways, direct chemical action or through interaction of electromagnetic fields. To get curative actions that are lasting, it is necessary to increase the intensity of the electromagnetic field of the substance. This is done through potentization where the force of electromagnetic field of the original substance is transferred to the solvent molecules yet without changing the resonant frequency. Hence, these isotopic molecules retain the medicinal properties of the original drug substance and is responsible for healing the sick. In homeopathic potentized medicines, the medicinal particles have no mass but only energy. So, the massless particles travel at the speed of light. As the vital principle is dynamic, it can only be deranged by some dynamic influence and similarly can only be rearranged by the medicinal energy which is dynamic in nature. Hence. The energy in homeopathic medicines is responsible for curing the natural disease. The Water Memory Theory Science could not explain how such highly diluted solutions could have an effect until the French biologist Jack Benvaniste came along. He formulated the idea that water retains a memory of what has been dissolved in it, essentially enabling the active ingredient to program the water molecules and leave its molecular imprint and it is this memory that results in the homeopathic effect. As the solution is made more and more dilute, larger and very stable aggregates develop. This would mean that the residual molecular clusters of the original substance may be present in homeopathic dilutions. 
Interestingly, alcohol also forms clusters with water which would further support the homeopathic analogy. Master Hahnemann advised the use of water doses in 50 millesimal scale. One nanometer is almost one by fifty thousandth of a hair. Hence, medicines prepared under 50 millesimal scale by the ratio 1 is to 50,000 contain nanoparticles of the drug substance, thus making it the most effective way to administer medicines without any side effects and unwanted aggravations leading to a faster cure. The Gene Regulatory Theory Professor A. R. Khudabaksh, PhD in Genetics of West Bengal, proposed a theory based on various scientific evidences that potentized homeopathic drugs act through regulation of relevant gene expressions. According to this hypothesis, homeopathic remedies carry specific signals that can be identified by specific receptors of the cells. These signals can act as a trigger for turning on or off certain relevant genes, initiating a cascade of gene reactions to alter and correct the gene expressions that went wrong to produce the disease. Thus, they regulate such signal proteins to bring back the recovery of the patient to normal health. Dr. N. Z. Sukul, PhD, is a scientist who does not belong to homeopathy but has done research in our medicine in patentized form for 20 years. Scientists tell that homeopathic potencies above 2012C do not contain any drug molecules, but clinical and experimental evidences show that they produce demonstrable effects on man, animals and plants. A few examples are Rustox 30C and Causticum 30C produce anti-inflammatory effects on adjuvant arthritis in albino rats. Potentized Nux formica reduces ethanol-induced sleep time in albino mice. It is thought that a potentized drug is specifically structured water and initiates its action on the water structure covering the cell membrane proteins at the site of the application of drugs by changing the conformation of those proteins. The therapeutic effects of potencies on man occur through expression and repression of proteins. The Quantum Field Theory It is recently found that Disease manifestation by the vital force could be an event similar to spontaneous symmetry breaking in quantum field theory, wherein the curative remedy acts to restore the broken symmetry field of the vital force. Based on age, homeopathy is the most modern system of medicine. Homeopathy is the first system in which the process of nanification started and is still continuing in the name of patentization. As scientists are searching and finding new horizons in nanotechnology, they become actually our sky to fly high. Homeopathy is exploring a re 